Namaste JVMs, my name is Pratika Srinivaran and I belong to the Department of Food Agriculture and Veterinary Sciences from the Department of Food and Biotechnology. So the topic which I'll be covering from the last session that was food business management. Um, so basically we were talking about uh, the introduction of the uh, agri-businesses. So how agriculture evolved in different sectors, right? So how agriculture existed and how uh, it expanded with the need of the earth. With globalization and with the uh, uh, expanded demand and expanded population, how it expanded. So that all we saw in the last session. Okay. So in this session, we'll be seeing, um, we'll be continuing from the services and agri businesses, that is the public sector, private sector, and free agents. So the, a small group called ACO uh, group was set up in 1963 to work on the problems of agriculture sector and cooperatives. This group was redesigned as a center for management uh, in agriculture in 1971 with a uh, goal to help the process of modernization of agri and food sector by using management plans. Right? In 1974, a special program in agriculture was started by IIM. The Center for Food and Agriculture Business was started in 1998 by IIM. Okay. The market size of Indian agriculture. Now let's talk about the market size of Indian agriculture. The two grains production in uh, 2018, uh, 2019 was uh, 285.2 million tons. The horticulture production was 306.82 million tons. And in between April and October, the agricultural exports were 21.61 US uh, billion dollars. Right? So this is a huge country. The India is also the largest producer, um, consumer, and exporter of spices and spice products. Now, the spice export reached to US dollar 3.1 billion in 2018-19. The tea exports reached to US dollar to 240 240.68 million kg. The coffee exports reached to 3.95 lakh tons. Now, this is really, really huge. This explains the importance of agriculture for the Indian economy. The food and grocery retail markets in India was worth US dollar 380 billion in 2017. By early 2019, India will start exporting, India has started exporting sugar to China. The first uh, uh, mega food park was established in Pakistan in March 2018. Agri food businesses uh, uh, received the funding of US dollar 1.66 billion. So, now, at the Indian, uh, now let's talk about what Indian government has uh, made different initiatives for the agricultural and food business producers. So, now new export policy aims to increase the agriculture exports to US dollar 60 billion by 2022. For stabilizing agri uh, prices, the PM for which government has announced to pay 15,053 crores, the assistance package, the sugar industry that is um, 5,500 5, crores, the agri udan, which aims to boost uh, innovative and entrepreneurship in agriculture. Now, Continuing the same topic, the development of irrigation sources are also provided for permanent solution from broad investment of rupees 50,000 crores. Plans to triple the capacity of food processing sector, that is, the scheme called Sampada. 100% FDI in marketing of food products and in food products, e commerce under the automatic food. Enum launched in April 2016, that is 9.87 million farmers, 1,9,000 registration. 
585 members or additional 458 members will be there in 2021. Around 100 million soil and lab soil health cards, SSPs, distributed and soil health mobile apps are launched to help the Indian farmers. Now, talking about the notable trends in agriculture business management and food business management, the changing consumer taste preferences and sensitization of quality, as well as healthy organic ingredients. The expansion of various international companies, risking demands on Indian products in foreign markets, high consumption of horticulture crops, the product innovation as a key to expansion. Then strengthening production to a procurement by direct farmer and the firm linkage. Now, what is the advantage of direct um, farm to the uh, firm linkages? That is, no middleman will be allowed. What do you mean by no middleman will be allowed? That means that the prices will be cut short. Prices will be cut short because there will be not anyone in the middle to you know, take the commission. So, the improved agroclimatic variation facilities then facilitates an enormous variety of production. Now, uh, here, the scope of agriculture business management in India is there is a varied number of climatic variations, like somewhere it is very hot, somewhere it is very cold, somewhere it is moderate, somewhere it is humid. So, improved agroclimatic variations facilitates enormous variety of production. There is growing demand for agricultural inputs like feed and fodder, inorganic fertilizers, biofertilizers, forest resources, livestock, heat eating, organic farming, biopesticides, high tech horticulture, ornamental fish cultures. So, the question is what is the scope of agribusiness in India? Okay. This is the question which you have to complete. So, India is the world's largest producer of pulses, rice, wheat, spices, and spice products. It is the second largest producer of fruits and vegetables in the world, accounting for 10.9% and 8.6% of the world fruit and vegetable production. India is also among the top producing milk and food. India has many areas to choose for business, such as Degree, meat, scold meat, fishery, and food grain. So, what basically is the importance of uh, agriculture uh, in the Indian economy? So, there are six main points that is, it contributes to national income. It is a source of livelihood for a number of farmers in India. It is a source of food supply, agriculture for industrial development. It has commercial importance and it is a source of government revenue. So, share of agriculture according to state case, Arunachal Pradesh has the most share of GDP that is 30% and above. Agriculture is the only major source of food supply as it is providing. Regular supply of food to such a huge population of our country. It has been estimated that about 60% of the household consumption is meant by agricultural products. In India, over 50% of the world working population are engaged uh, directly on agriculture and also similarly depending on the livelihood in comparison to that of. 2 to 3 percent of UK and USA, 6 percent of France, and 7 percent of Australia. Agriculture in India has been a major source of supply for raw materials to the various important industries of our country cotton and jute, textile, sugar, tea, coffee, rubber, and agro based cottage industry. And also regularly collecting the raw materials directly from agriculture. Now, what are the social government services? Right? So now some of the government, some of the sectors like railways, 
Those days are also the rising of food part of the income from the movement of agricultural goods. Indian agriculture is played a very important role both in internal and external trade of the country. Agriculture produces like tea, coffee, sugar, tobacco, spices, cashew nuts are the main items for our exports and constitute about 50% of our total exports. Besides manufactured seed, cotton textiles, and sugar also constitute another 20% of the total exports of the country. Thus, nearly 70% of India's exports are originated from agricultural sector. The schemes that support the agricultural development in India are National Food Security Mission, that is NFSM, National Mission on Sustainable Agriculture, National Mission on Oil Feed and Oil Farm, National Mission on Agricultural Extension and Technology, the Mission of Integrated Development of Horticulture, the Rajkri Krishi Vikas Yojana, the Pradhan Mantri Krishi Bhima Yojana, the Integrated Scheme on Agriculture Cooperation, the Integrated Scheme on um, Agriculture Marketing, the Pradhan Mantri Krishi Sampada Yojana. So, it has, it, is, it aims at doubling the farmer's income by 2020. The minimum support price for all the upcoming health crops has been raised to 1.5 times of the production. The first Duma Yuzna loan by the government is a major step in the direction. The coverage of this scheme will increase from 30% of the crop area in 2017-18 and 50% in 2019. The export commodity has been liberalized to meet India's agriculture exports. The state government will be encouraged to follow models such as model agricultural land in the after 2017. Um, the agriculture produce and livestock of marketing act um, of 2017 and model agriculture produce and livestock contract farming and services. Promoting and Facilitation Act of 2017. So the questions for this video are, how can we ensure income to the farmers? How can India ensure food security to the growing population? The scope of agribusiness industries in the Indian context. So agriculture contributes to be a major sector of the Indian economy through its share in the gross domestic product has declined from 50% in early 1950s to 14% in 2000, 19 and 20. The employment in agriculture has also shown um, slowly and presently at the count of 52% of the country's total labor force. The declining share of agriculture in GDP is employed is consistent with the theory of economic development. However, a faster and sustainable growth in the sector remains vital for the creation of jobs, um, um, enhancing incomes and ensuring food security. India has 140 million hectares of net crop area next to that of USA. The diverse climatic conditions, uh, the diverse climatic conditions um, and much of the land in India can be double crop. Traditionally, crop production has accounted for over four fifths of the agricultural output. The evolution of the agriculture policy says that the agriculture has remained a highly regulated sector in India, with government agencies and parasitic existing a pervasive influence over it. These regulatory controls are imposed by both central and state governments. The state governments, however, continue to retain the constitutional authority over the sector. After independence, India pursued a policy of food self-sufficiency in state reforms. That is the right one. The policies were initially focused on the expansion of cultivated area, introduction of land reforms, community development, and restructuring of rural credit institutions. The trade was strictly regulated through 
quota restrictions and high tariff rates. The main policy measures in agriculture sector was adopted in the mid 1960s. Talking about the green revolution, the second phase of the agriculture and food policy started in the mid 90s with the advent of the green deal. The adoption of improved crop technologies and food varieties became the main source of growth. That is all. This is all for this video. We will see. We will continue in the next video. The same topic that is the food and agriculture part. Thank you.